tuning in today. I am very happy you are here with me today because I have an exciting video where we're gonna talk all about my Eloquor procedure everything and I'm sharing with you all the details and my actual truthful thoughts on this procedure because what it seems is there's not a lot of information like real reviews or information out there yet. This is a relatively new procedure and I'm going to share with you all the details today. So before I dive into it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you love skincare and if you want to get your best skin, no matter what age you were at, you came to the right place. Join us, hit the subscribe button. I have been in the skincare industry now for over 13 years. I have worked alongside some of the best cosmetic doctors, dermatologists, the best medical grade skincare brands, and I'm sharing with you all of my tips right here. So subscribe, hit that bell notification so you don't miss any videos. And then also you can pop over to my Instagram, join me over there because I'm on there pretty much every single day with more skincare tips. But let's dive into this video, you guys. I'm sharing with you all of my Eloquor details recovery, thoughts, all of it. Okay, so if you follow me over on Instagram, you've definitely seen a little bit of the behind the scenes of my Eloquor process. I did not share too much over there because I really wanted to make this video and share all the details all at once right here. But Eloquor is a newer advancement in skin tightening. It's a newer advancement. It's been around for years actually. And the doctor that I went to, not only is she my best friend, but she's an amazing dermatologist and she's been involved in the clinical trials since the beginning, years ago. So it's been around for a while, it's been tested for years, and it's finally kind of like coming out into the market and it's making a huge name for itself because it is a huge advancement in non-surgical skin tightening. So before, if you wanted to get skin tightening and if you wanted to like lift the lower part of your face, you had to get a lower facelift. Eloquor is made to slightly lift and tighten the lower face. So all of this area. So basically it's a micro coring technology. And what that is, is it's all these tiny little needles that go into your skin. The needles have this little tube. It's a needle with a little tube. Um, and then actually sucks the skin out of your face. So you're removing all these tiny little, just microspheres of skin. And what that's gonna do is as your skin heals, it's going to contract and it's going to tighten. And this is an absolute first in this whole non-surgical skin tightening world. So Elicor Microcoring is FDA approved for the mid phase to lower phase in skin tightening. So if you have a loss of skin laxity, if you have wrinkles in this area, this is the area from mid phase down that is specifically geared for. So Eloquor is not an energy-based device. It is not a laser. It is not producing any heat. So that means it's going to be better and more widely used on a variety of skin types and tones. And that also means that there is no potential of scarring with this device. So like I said, this procedure is very, very different than anything else on the kind of skincare device market right now. This is kind of like a new technology. And I'm super excited that I got to try it with a top dermatologist who has had experience with this for years. So this device is basically recommended for anyone ages 40 to 50 who is starting to see slight laxity of the lower face. Jowls, slight, you know, a little bit of sagging that starts to happen. I am 43. Um, I definitely started to see a little bit of that laxity happening in the gel area. I know I get so many messages that are like, why did you get this done? You don't need it. It's what I see and it's definitely what my dermatologist friend, she saw, you know, a slight like, little laxity. This isn't meant for somebody who has extreme laxity or extreme wrinkles because then yes, you just have to go the surgical route and yes, you have to do it the facelift. This is made for somebody who is in the beginning stages before they see extreme laxity in their skin who just wants to tighten everything up and keep that facelift away for as long as possible. So I, being 43 and starting to see just a little bit of that lower face laxity, I was the perfect candidate for this procedure. Let's talk about the pain because a lot of people have been asking me, what's the pain like? Because it looks super painful. And I can say that if I did not have numbing, it would have been very, very painful. But I did have topical numbing on probably for about a good hour at least topical numbing. And then I did get a dental block of numbing as well, which is an absolute must. That is like a must. Elicor says everyone should have a dental block. Now, I will say 
I am very sensitive to epinephrine and I hate like when my face is numb, it just, I get anxiety. I just, I, something about it. So I said to Steph, like keep my numbing to a minimum. I'd rather like feel it or take a little bit of pain. I just can't handle epinephrine or like feeling that numbness in my entire face. I just can't. So she kept my numbing to like six milligrams when most doctors do like 20 to 22 for this type of procedure. So mine was very minimal. And I I will say that it was not terrible. There's was there was areas in my face that I felt absolutely nothing and then there was areas in my face that I felt a little bit. I think maybe twice I had to stop her and they had to do a local kind of like anesthesia um, and just add a little bit more numbing. And I, I felt it, but it wasn't like terrible. And again, I will take a little bit of pain over epinephrine any day. So for me, it was it was not terrible and it could have been way better if I would have just had more numbing but most doctors will do the local they will do the nerve block and they also have laughing gas too so there's like a wide variety of numbing and things to make you feel relaxed and comfortable during the procedure it was not terrible now I did get from all of this area down I did not do my chin because I didn't I, I, that was the last part they were gonna do and I was like nope I'm done like <laughs> it was like a 30 minute thing. I was like, I just had it. I was like, I'm done. My, my chin is fine. And, um, they agreed. They said the same thing. They were like, you don't need your chin done. You don't have any wrinkles or, um, texture to your skin or anything like that. Your chin's fine. I'm like, good, I'm done. <laughs> That's it. So I did not do my chin, but I did everywhere from here down. And I also did my upper, upper lip and the upper lip just helps to kind of create a little bit of a lip lift effect. And then also just smooths that area. Because again, as we get older, that's where little lines can start to happen. I didn't have any lines there, but I just wanted to be preventative and like, why not? Like I've already done all of this, just do a couple over my lips. So I did that area too. All right, guys, here we are 24 hours later after I had the Elicor treatment done. Can't believe I'm sitting here on the internet like this just for you guys. <laughs> um, but here's 24 hours later and you can see I'm very swollen. My whole lower face is swollen. I have obviously a lot of the redness to my skin yet where you can actually see the little points where the needles go into your skin. That is all still very apparent on my skin. I'm not expecting that to go away very quickly. I think that's going to take a good four, five days to fully go away, but I'm not in any pain. It's not painful. I just feel a little, a little bit tight from being swollen and just a little bit sore. That's pretty much day one swelling. I still have a lot of redness to my skin. Um, I can't really do a lot. I can't scrub my face. I can't get rid of all the crusty marks on my skin. I have to be very, very gentle with my skin. I can't even stand in the shower and like you know, warm to hot water. Like I have to keep everything very more cool on my skin, wash my skin with a gentle, gentle cleanser. I'm using the Elastin Gentle Cleanser twice a day only. No skincare is allowed, just Aquaphor. So day one, here we are looking so great, <laughs> but it's really not that bad. It's just swelling and a little bit of like a tight, a little bit sore feeling. But yeah, here we go, you guys. Day one, in the books. All right, here we are, day number two, after I had the Elicor treatment done, and this is what I look like today. So the things that I notice myself is that the swelling is starting to go down. I am definitely still swollen, and then I obviously still have all the red squares um, the, where the microcoring happened. That's not gonna disappear for the next couple days, I'm guessing. I see slight fading of it, but again, that's gonna be there a little bit longer. Um, I also see some bruising that is starting to kind of pop up to the surface. I have a bruise here. I have a bruise around my lip over here. And then I have some like yellow undertone bruises that I see deep within my skin that just, you know how bruises like have that like hue to them? I see some of that going on too. But my skin has that kind of like tight, like rough texture to it right now. I still cannot wash with anything other than my Elastin Gentle Cleanser. All I can put on my skin still is Aquaphor and that is it. All right, so there you go. That is day number two. Things are looking good. They are progressing as they are supposed to. Again, no pain, just kind of like a I have to be very gentle. It's still kind of like a tender feeling, but that's it. So I will check back in with you guys for day number three tomorrow. All right, guys, here we are, day number three, and day number three in their recovery process. If you look at Elicor's website, they say day number three is when 
the majority of people feel that their recovery is in a good spot, that they can go back to work, they can go about their daily lives. No. Sorry, Elicora, we are not there yet. This is actual day number three, and I do not feel ready to go outside my house. <laughs> so here's what I'm seeing and dealing with on day number three. I'm actually seeing that a lot of the red spots where the treatment was actually delivered into my skin, I'm seeing that it is starting to fade. And again, that's a process, but I'm seeing it fade. I am still swollen, but I'm also noticing that the swelling is going down. So a lot of that just, I felt like a chipmunk. A lot of that is starting to go down. But what I'm noticing is that the, the bruising, that yellow undertone bruising that I shared with you guys yesterday is definitely coming out more. There is definite underlying bruising, especially like in this area right here. It is not as tender anymore. So when I wash my face at night with, again, the Elastin Gentle Cleanser, that's all I'm allowed to use. When I wash my face at night, it is not sore and tender as much as it was. I've also noticed this rash popping up today, which I know is from the Aquaphor that I've been applying to my skin. My skin is like, what is this occlusive crap that you're applying? Stop doing that. Like, where's the good skincare? This is where we are today, day number three. Hey guys, here we are, day number four. Here is where we are in the recovery process after four days. I feel like things are actually looking really good for four days. My swelling has really, really gone down. I do still have a lot of bruising. You can see a lot of the yellow bruising up along the jawline and around this area which makes sense. We did go four millimeters deep, which is the most you can go. And obviously there's a lot of bone in this area. So she got me good, <laughs> which I will take, but I did get a lot of bruising. That's gonna take some time to go away. I do still have the famous Elacor red squares that are still fading and healing. I saw Steph who did my procedure. She said everything looks really great and it's going good in the recovery process. It's just gonna take time. I was using Aquaphor, but then I developed a rash. I was getting all that rash on my neck and then I got a rash up here too. You can probably see some of that a little bit. Um, it started to go away a little bit since I stopped Aquaphor and now I'm using good old Vaseline. So I just have to keep a very thin layer of Vaseline on my skin and I have to do that until day number seven. Day seven, I can start with a mild, gentle, medical grade skincare again. And my skin is gonna be so happy. So I'm looking forward to day number seven. But day number four, here we are. All right, guys, here we are, day number five in the Elacor recovery process. Don't mind the hair today because I have taken this time at home to give my hair a little break from washing it so often. So here we are. In terms of the Elacor recovery, things are going great. Again, day number five, things are recovering. They're in progress. Pretty much I'm on the home stretch. Swelling is really down. My skin is not tender or sore anymore. I still have a couple bruises along the jawline, but even those are fading. The red squares are noticeably fading day by day. In terms of skin, like texture, my skin is just very dry right now. Um, my skin barrier is disrupted. Like any time you do a procedure like lasers, microneedling, uh, Morpheus Aid, Elacor, anything that is like a procedure like that is going to disrupt your skin barrier and it's going to create dryness to your skin. So today's day number five. Tomorrow I can start adding in some growth factors and some barrier repair products, which my skin is going to absolutely love. I have not been able to use those up until tomorrow, which that is in turn going to really help speed up the process of healing too. So I'm super excited about that. But here we are. You can see what day number five looks like, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for day number six. Hey guys, here we are, day number six of the Elacor recovery process, and not a whole lot to go over today. This is where we are. Again, things are fading. My skin is just very, very dry. It is very flaky, very dry. Um, today, I actually get to start using skincare though, which is going to really help boost the recovery process. I saw my friend Steph today, Steph, the dermatologist who did my procedure, and I'm free and clear to start using my growth factors and healing skincare. So here we are, day number six though. The little red spots are still there, but they're fading. I still have some bruising. I got 
a good treatment. <laughs> and so I do still have bruising that is almost gone as well. So that is it for today. Not much going on to report. I'll see you guys for tomorrow's check-in. All right, here we are, day number seven. It has been a full week since I had my Eloquor treatment and here we are. Things are getting better day by day. Since I added in my growth factors and healing products for my skincare, I feel like I've seen such a difference already in the last 24 hours, which is insane. So this is where we are today. We do still have the red little squares that are still apparent on my skin, but they are fading even quicker now with those growth factor products. How everything is looking so much better we are getting there this is definitely not a quick downtime procedure especially if you get a deeper more aggressive treatment but in terms of recovery it um is not painful afterwards like whatsoever but there is a lot of swelling at first i had a lot of bruising one because i did bleed more i think than some people probably do um so I did have some quite some yellow bruising going on. But then again, I did get a deeper treatment too. My treatment was like the deepest depth you could go. So that is going to create a, um, you know, more of a recovery process. I was like, this is gonna be a once and done. Just give it to me. I like to be just like, do it. And then I just want to be done with this. I'm not the type of person who wants to like, do a light treatment and then come back multiple times. I'm like, no, just hit me, get it over with, let's go. So my treatment was at the, the deepest depth. So I did have bruising and then I do still at my 11, no, 12 day mark today, I do still have the pink squares. And that is something that honestly, I think no one talks about because when you look on doctor websites or Eloquor website, they say that the downtime is three days. The downtime is not three days. I still had swelling at three days and I was nowhere ready to go out in public. Three days, I was like still in hiding. Um, the recovery process is way longer than what anybody really advertises. So you have to be aware of that. It is a good three days of swelling. I still had all the bruising. I still had so much redness to my skin and you cannot wear any makeup and you cannot use any of your skincare for seven days. And that is because you have to wait till all those little micro holes are closed up. So in the clinical trials of the Elacor and Microcoring you know, device, what they found was people who started using healing skincare too early and it was getting deep into your skin because of all those little holes and those little channels, you know, deep within your skin, it was actually creating granulomas in your skin. And that's kind of like bumps and like, it's like a bumpy rash that occurs because of the, you know, active ingredients. And it doesn't even have to be active ingredients. It could be like peptides or, you know, healing technology of skincare, but because your skin is in such a healing phase, you cannot put anything on it. So I had to wear Vaseline and aquaphor for seven days. So it's not like you can really go out of your house with all those little red, you know, squares because you can't wear makeup for at least seven days. So it was only at the sixth day, like I started wearing skincare at night six because I saw my doctor and she said, yes, you're, everything's closed up, you're good. I only started wearing like healing skincare on night six. From then on, I did see more of a quicker healing because of the products I was using in my skincare. And I will link all of my post-recovery skincare down below in the description box because that's when I started adding in like a growth factor and really repairing and healing, you know, ingredients that definitely created uh, a faster recovery for myself that I definitely noticed. But again, today, still day 12, I'm still having the red not, they're not red anymore, they're pink because they are fading day by day, but it's a slow process. And I honestly don't think that they're gonna be completely gone till a good three to four weeks. So in terms, if you're gonna compare this technology, the non-surgical facelift to a facelift, my sister-in-law is a cosmetic doctor who does facelifts. Um, she told me that the, the, you know, the average recovery of a facelift is, two to four weeks. So you're looking at the same timeline, you know, in recovery between Elicor and a facelift. It just all depends on you, what result you're looking for and how drastic of a result you want. With a facelift, you're gonna get an instant result. You are gonna have to go through that 
you know, two to four week recovery, but you're getting an instant lift and an instant result. With Elicor, this is going to be geared for somebody who has minimal tightening needs, minimal gels, and just wants to be a little bit more proactive and, you know, really kind of keep off that facelift. So this is still going to be a two to four week process in recovery. It is not instant results because Elicor, you know, will tell you that the final result of this is three months. So I will do a check-in again and like kind of like a update video in three months at my three month mark and I will really put up before and after pictures because I can't do that now. It wouldn't be fair. I'm not at that mark yet. I'm still recovering and you have to give yourself enough time for all of the recovery to happen and for your skin to build that collagen and kind of, you know, tighten itself up to get the final result. And that's not going to be for three to four months. So it's completely different, you know, than a facelift. But for somebody who wants that non-surgical skin tightening of the lower face, this could be, you know, a great procedure. Now, I did only have one treatment. If you have more skin laxity, it's not a one and done treatment. You are going to need, you know, up to three monthly treatments. So that's a lot. You are going to be recovering th for three months, basically, um, to get the full effect of more tightening. So honestly, truthfully, like, you know, you like, you know, I always am with you guys. I don't know like how worth it this is. I'm super excited to kind of get to that three month recovery mark and see if I have just that slight little tightening that I'm looking for. I don't know. We'll see you guys, but I kind of wanted to just give this video to you guys a while, let you know the information, give you, you know, the, how the procedure works, my experience with it my recovery with it. But then I will do a three month update video and we'll see before and after pictures then if I got any like actual, you know, great results that we can all see. So I'll do an update video at three months. But here I am like, I have to look at my calendar. It's either 11 or 12 days. I think we're at 12 days right now um, in the recovery process. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions, anything that I missed during this video. Oh, in terms of pricing, because I did get asked about pricing, that is going to really depend on where you are. I have seen lots of different doctors advertising different prices. It also depends on what areas you are getting and all of that. So that's something you definitely need to talk to your specific doctor about. Um, again, if you guys have any questions though, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.